you're no longer needed here, so get out of this house. We are a family of three. So we don't need you anymore. Are you saying I'm not part of the family? Of course, you aren't. Why would you think you're part of our family? We don't need someone who's low educated and incompetent. Raised by a single mother, I worked hard after graduating from high school. Despite my mother in law's cruel words declaring me incompetent and not part of the family. Yet, I've earned a fortune of $500,000, supporting this lifestyle all by myself. How bold of her to act like this. I wonder if they can manage the hefty living expenses without me? Well, if she's telling me to leave, then I guess I shouldn't care. Understood. Take care, then. If she hates me that much, I'll leave as she wishes. But a week later, a panicked call from a pale-faced mother-in-law came. Come back. We can't live without you. It's too late for them to realize my worth after I've gone. They must be already seeing hell, but they need to see more to appease my anger. The moment she heard my response, my mother-in-law was at a loss for words. I'm a 29-year-old woman living in New York. Currently making a decent income through investments and business ventures. I don't have a desire to scatter my money, so my savings just keep growing. However, the one thing I do spend on is taking care of my mother. Since my parents divorced when I was young, my mother raised me single-handedly. She worked part-time, sacrificing a lot to raise me, and I truly appreciated it. That's why I started working right after high school instead of going to college. Sending money back home, and even now, I send enough to ensure she lives comfortably. We go on overseas trips a few times a year. And my filial piety towards my mother motivates my current job. One day, I met a man through a friend. It's amazing that you run your own company at the same age as me. I really respect you. He truly respected me, and I was increasingly drawn to his character. Eventually, we started dating, and a year later, we were married. My mother, who had been worried about my marriage, was genuinely happy. And I felt fortunate to have gotten married since I had been focused only on work. Soon after our marriage, I was invited to a dinner at my in-laws. Is it true you're not employed? Huh? I heard from my son that you're self-employed. And it's not making much money, right? Your clothes look poor too. You should work properly, considering your age. It seemed my mother-in-law was misunderstanding something. But discussing how much I earn sounded like bragging, so I smoothly deflected. I mainly pay for the living expenses and I wasn't burdening him. Which I told her and that was the end of the conversation. I sensed that my mother-in-law didn't have a great impression of me. People with old-fashioned ideas might think working for a big corporation is best. But that's not the case nowadays. However, since I'm not troubling anyone, I decided not to worry too much about it. Then one day, my husband called me. I need to talk to you. It seems my mother's chronic illness has worsened. And since my father is worried, he was hoping we could live together in this house. What do you think? Your parents are moving in with us? That's what it means. He brought it up casually, but it was a discussion I didn't want to accept. Since our marriage, I wasn't liked by my mother-in-law so much and she didn't acknowledge me. So I had no idea what living together would lead to. No, I'd rather not live together. What? Do you not care about my parents? You could show a little more concern. It's not that I don't care, but I'd rather look for another solution. I wanted to refuse to live with them at all costs, but we had difficulty progressing this matter. Due to my strong refusal, my husband eventually understood. 
However, a shocking event occurred a week later. On a rare day off, I was at home when the intercom rang early in the morning. And to my surprise, my in-laws had arrived. We're coming in. Huh? It was outrageous for them to show up at our house without any notice. And they even brought large luggage. What is this luggage for? What do you mean? It's for moving in, obviously. Why are you so surprised? Moving in. I haven't heard anything about this. Of course, you never accepted us. But it's good that our son took care of it. Despite our clear agreement not to take in my in-laws. My husband had accepted them without my knowledge. I was utterly shocked. But since their rented home was already terminated and they had packed up, there was no way to send them away. I had no choice but to accept them. However, from that day on, my stress multiplied. I often work from home, but my mother-in-law started interfering. What are you doing? Pretending to work? That's not it, but I'm really busy right now, okay? Playing around, pretending to be a businesswoman, huh? It's nice not having to do any housework. I was too busy with work to handle household chores, and since my in-laws had moved in, I thought the least my mother-in-law could do was to help out. Especially since she was at home doing nothing. However, she did nothing of the sort and complained about my focus on work daily. What's so fun about pretending to work? I'm not just pretending, and I've been contributing to the household expenses. So I don't think I deserve any complaints. After I said this, she was silent, but her presence was seriously irritating me. Life was stressful, but work suddenly got busier, and I had no time to deal with this. One day, a month into this life, my mother-in-law called me to the living room. In the living room, not only was my mother-in-law there, but also my father-in-law and husband, both of whom were looking at me with serious expressions. Look, this is sudden, but can you leave this house? What? Your presence is no longer needed. This house is practically ours now, so you are unnecessary. What do you mean? Originally, the plan was to take over this house. I wouldn't normally marry someone ugly like you, would I? At that moment, hearing what my husband said, my face turned pale. I had never imagined that he would say something like this. Of course, I had thought him selfish when he brought his parents without asking. But, that the marriage itself was all part of a plan was truly shocking. So, it was all about the money? You didn't want to marry me, you just wanted the house. And you thought of something so terrible. Well, yeah, that's about it. You don't need such a big house, right? So, please leave. The marriage and even the move of my in-laws were all a strategy to take this house from me. I didn't need to listen anymore, but I couldn't stay silent after being told this much. Understood. I don't need this house anymore. So let's forget about any property division, alright? Right. We've only been married a short while, and I'm not interested. So I don't need anything. Okay, then. With that promise from him, I had him sign a contract. We then proceeded with the divorce preparations, and our divorce was easily finalized. I never thought my first marriage would end so easily. But I decided to live a happy, new life from now on. It took a few days to complete various procedures after the divorce. But just as everything was about to be finalized, I received a call from my mother-in-law. Hello. What is this contract about? Are you talking about the lease contract? My mother-in-law was surprised and contacted me. Probably misunderstanding that she could keep the house. 
but that was the office my company had contracted, not a private home. Considering asset formation, buying a house nowadays is unthinkable. This house is a rental. I thought it was a privately owned home since it came fully furnished. Who said it was a private home? It was a rental that I used as a home office, so it's rented. Well, what about this amount? A rent of $3,000, I can't pay that. I can't help it, since you decided to live there after the divorce, you have to sign a new contract. The rent was being paid by my company before. But now that it's no longer an office, you'll have to take care of future payments. I was about to hang up the phone. But she kept shouting loud enough that I could hear her without holding the phone to my ear. I didn't hear about this. My son thought it was a private home too, you deceived us. Huh? I didn't intend to deceive. You all seemed to really want the house, so I gave it up. I could have continued living there after the divorce. But if I did, you wouldn't have been able to sign a new rental contract. That was my kindness. As I explained, my mother-in-law fell silent. She spoke as if I had deceived them, but I was not the deceiver. If it's about deceiving, I was the one deceived. They were planning to betray me from the beginning, so these three have no right to blame me. When you brought up the divorce, I wondered how you would manage the expenses. But well, since we're strangers after the divorce, I didn't go into it. Enough with the jokes. What's so fun about deceiving like this? There's no way we can pay this amount. I was paying that amount comfortably. It's miserable that people who look down on me earn less, isn't it? There are two of you who are supposed to be working, can't you pay? I was paying it by myself. I spoke in a disdainful tone, and she fell silent in frustration. However, after a few seconds of silence, she resumed speaking in a calmer voice. Wait a minute, so you were earning quite a lot? Yes, but did you just realize that? I don't boast, but I was earning about $500,000 a year. Huh? What? I didn't know you were earning that much. You never asked. It's not something to boast about. Bragging about how much one earns is something a nouveau riche would do. I never took pride in just earning money, and as a child. I despised classmates who ridiculed me for being poor and bragged about their family's wealth. So even as I succeeded as an adult, I vowed never to flaunt my financial status. But to think you were earning so much. Ah. By the way, the rent is separate, okay? I was writing it off as a business expense. And I managed to save quite a bit over a year. I only use it for savings or traveling with my mother. Well, work got so busy this year, I couldn't travel at all. So most of the money I earned went into savings. That means there must be quite an amount even just for the property division. I don't need this rental house, give me that amount. Hanging in front of a mother-in-law who was disappointed to learn the house was just a rental. Was the reality of a $500,000 salary savings. She immediately latched onto this amount. Since you're divorcing, a property division is necessary. You know that, right? Certainly, but haven't you read what's in the contract? What? I did get him to sign it, you know? After the divorce, there would be no division of property. That's why I haven't split any of his assets, and I have no intention of splitting my savings either. We both signed the contract. Even though I had discussed the lack of property division right in front of her. It was as if she had developed dementia and forgotten about it. But when I brought up the contract, she fell silent for a moment. However, she soon resumed the conversation. That's invalid. 
Really, what are you thinking? After trying to deceive me and take the house. Now you claim even the contract is invalid? Please stop. If you cause any more trouble, I will demand alimony, you know? Alimony. You've been interfering with my work and harassing me, haven't you? Also, your son married me with the intention to deceive, which could go to court, you know? Maybe you should consider your position a bit more carefully? Hearing the words alimony and a court, my mother-in-law must have been frightened. She didn't complain any further and spoke in a flustered tone throughout. Thinking it a waste of time to talk any more with her, I just hung up the phone. I informed my husband that if he continued living in that house after the divorce, he would need to sign a new rental agreement. Soon after, he tried to contact me, but I continued to ignore his calls. However, after more than 30 minutes of continuous calling, I felt nearly insane and finally answered the phone. Hello. What is it with all these calls? I'm going crazy here. About that. Can we possibly cancel the divorce? I truly regret it. I'm sorry. Huh? That's impossible. Why should I do that? I was appalled that he, having deceived me so much, would suddenly suggest cancelling the divorce. I. I can't make it financially. You used to pay most of the rent and living expenses. And I spent the rest on shopping, so most of my salary goes to credit card payments. And my father thought we had secured the house and quit his job. He quit his job? The company he worked for was doing poorly. And they offered a lot of money for early retirement. Then he should manage with the retirement money. It's different. He was foolish and bought a car with that money. It's really been a mess this month. What were they thinking? Although I couldn't understand those foolish people, I at least understood that my husband was in a dire situation. But it was hard to sympathize, given he had deceived me. We're divorced now, and we're strangers, right? What you do with the house, or how you manage your life, it's none of my business anymore. If you continue contacting me, I'll demand alimony and take it further, okay? Please. Don't say that. I did love you. Yes, I was after the house too, but deep down, I cared about you. Look, once someone's deceived me, I can't trust them again. The world isn't so forgiving, and as an adult, you should know that better than anyone. Just don't bother me anymore. After saying that, I hung up the phone. I then turned off my smartphone and continued to ignore any further contacts. Eventually, the contacts ceased, and I don't know how they are managing now. But I have cut ties with them and started a new life. Since then, I haven't been in contact with him, so I don't know the details. But I heard from mutual acquaintances that he ended up quitting his job. Apparently, after cutting ties with his parents, he led a separate life from his parents. But the credit card payments became too much. And he could hardly allocate money for living expenses. The stress reached a limit, and he stopped going to work. He became indifferent to everything, stopped making card payments. And is currently going through bankruptcy procedures. As for his parents, they spent most of the retirement money on buying a car leaving them with very little cash. Even with their pensions combined, it seems insufficient for living. Out of necessity, both started working, but as they are quite aged. No companies are willing to hire them, so they are living a frugal life doing part-time jobs. Despite once dreaming of a luxurious life in a large house, they are now living the exact opposite. People who see others only in terms of money and judge solely based on pros and cons. This is the only outcome awaiting them. 
Meanwhile, my company's performance has improved. And I now live with my mother, able to perform acts of filial piety daily. After work, I go out to eat with my mother, and on weekends, we go on day trips. I am enjoying such a happy life.